As we await a decision from that appellate court in San Francisco, President Trump's travel ban hangs in the balance. We are seeing strong reaction now from the national security community. In fact, both sides of the issue speaking out. And just last hour, the president framing the debate before a group of sheriffs in Washington, D.C. I think it's sad. I think it's a sad day. I think our security is at risk today. And it will be at risk until such time as we are entitled and get what we are entitled to as citizens of this country, as chiefs, as sheriffs of this country. We want security. Chief Intelligence Correspondent Catherine Herridge picks it up from there. She's live in Washington. You were listening as well. And Catherine, where are we now? Good morning. Well, thank you, Bill. As you mentioned, within the last hour, we did hear from the president who's meeting with county sheriffs for a second day here in Washington. Many of these law enforcement professionals are from border states, and they back the wall as well as the travel ban. The president used this photo op to weigh in on the pending court decision. Courts seem to be so political, and it would be so great for a justice system if they would be able to read a statement and do what's right. And that has to do with the security of our country, which is so important. In his first congressional testimony as secretary, Homeland Security Chief John Kelly told the House committee yesterday that the travel ban is constitutional, adding that the buck doesn't stop with the judges if a terrorist gets through. In their courtrooms, they're protected by people like me. Uh, so they can have those discussions. Um, and uh, and, and if something happens bad from, uh, you know, from letting people in, they, they don't come to the, the, the judge to ask him about his ruling. They come to people like me. Kelly also testified that the mostly seven Muslim nations are either not cooperating or can't provide reliable intelligence because their governments are in such disarray. Well, though. there's opposition, mm -hmm. clearly, and there is opposition from some national security professionals in D.C. Mm -hmm. uh, what are they saying, Catherine? Well, that's right, Bill. This bipartisan brief that was filed on behalf of 10 former national security officials states that the order creates risk for U.S. troops overseas and that there's no evidence it would effectively prevent terror suspects from entering the United States. Signed by former CIA Director Michael Hayden, who was part of the Bush team, and former Secretary of State John Kerry under the Obama administration, among others, it says they recognize the importance of thorough vetting, adding, quote, we all are, nevertheless, unaware of any specific threat that would justify the travel ban established by the executive order issued on January 27, 2017. We view the order as one that ultimately undermines the national security of the United States rather than making us safer. Washington State's Attorney General told Fox's Dan Springer that the problems with the order go beyond national security. The president is not adhering to the Constitution when it comes to his executive action. It's my responsibility as Attorney General to defend the rule of law. As soon as we get word on uh, that decision, Bill, we'll bring it right to you. Good deal. Catherine, thank you. Catherine Harridge in Washington.